Hello, this uh, power supply has two bad capacitors. They are uh, 820 microfarad, 200 volt. This came from um, an RV. And uh, the fuse is also blown. So I'm going to unsolder these capacitors real quick and remove them. And I got some more on the way. This is a desoldering tool. It has a uh, suction cup in there and it's spring loaded so it will pull a vacuum when you push the button and pull solder up in there. So all you have to do is heat up the puddle of solder you want to remove. Put that tip in there and suck up some of the loose solder. Raise that temperature some. Nice and melted, about 660 degrees. Right, let's see how loose that is. Extra on it. The rest of them aren't looking bad. What I find helpful is to put a little pressure in one direction while I desolder the uh, lead for that. Kind of keep it moving, and that'll create a cold solder joint so it won't stick back. That other side is already free, so that capacitor should. And it's kind of glued in place, also. But that should come out. Get the screwdriver and break that puddle of glue that's holding it together. glob of glue right there was attached to the capacitor pretty good uh, there's a nice little uh, puddle of dielectric down in there Gotta separate that glue from the other capacitor and it's already broke loose too That one was okay, but if this one had failed, that one wasn't far behind. You can kind of see it's probably uh, kind of wet on the bottom, and the top was bulged out, melted. That one got really hot, and that uh, blew the fuse on the board. 15 amp, 250 volt. I hope that's all that's wrong with this. I'll make a another video after I get the capacitors in and uh, get it put back together, see if it'll work. All right, the capacitors have arrived. 820 microfarad, 200 volt. I've uh, soldered in a loop of wire where the fuse was. The fuse was blown. And uh, I've got a fuse holder I'm going to put in the chassis of this. In case that happens again, it doesn't have to be taken apart to repair it. 
the uh, circuit schematic, if you see it in there, it's labeled negative and positive. The capacitors have a negative stripe. Those kind of firmly pressed in place and in their tabs a little bit so they want to stay there fairly securely. Soldering iron on about up to temperature. Those four capacitors soldered in place there. I go back and forth between them. Let one cool down a little bit. Stuck back in its spot there. Still got all the screws right up here. Screws and two fuses in the fan. A magnetic screwdriver. <clears throat> there we go. Hidden in there.
go. <clears throat> It's two fuses. Two thirty five amp fuses. And install the fan. Into the case from the back. Case was riveted together. The um, person I got it from had drilled the rivets out. So I'm not going to worry about putting the cover back on for testing until I know it works. closer to the plug Let's see if it works thirteen point seven two fan kicked on for a second I guess that only turns on when it's needed Let it run for a minute and see, make sure everything's all right. Well, I can hook a load up to it and see. How it performs. I've got a pretty large DC motor here. It's a uh, 24 volt motor. 10 amps. I'm sure it'll still spin. Should uh, apply enough load to the power supply to be able to test it under a, a pretty good load and make sure it's all good. Quite a bit of torque. A little fan kicked on and kicked off again. We'll let it run for a little bit and see if the heat sink feels like it might be getting warm and the fan will kick back on. Should be good. Thanks for watching.